For God shall bring every work into judgment and every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Let me just read that again. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be bad. Folks, we can't hide nothing from God. I don't care how we try to think we can get by with this. God says, I'm going to shout it from the rooftops if you don't watch out. Can't hide nothing from you. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, God, I thank you and I praise you for your many blessings. <coughs> Father, all the praise and honor and the glory, God, goes to you. God, this is the day that the Lord has made. We should be glad and rejoice in it. Father, God, I ask you to take this word today, God, and an anointing. God, let it go out and touch the hearts and the minds of the people. Father, God, this is the day that the Lord has made. We should be glad and rejoice in it. Holy Ghost, walk up and down the avenues of this church. God, yeah. let the anointing go out across the airway. God, touch those that are listening. God, let the Holy Ghost go down and touch them, God. Lord, move on their lives, whatever it may be. God, open up their eyes and they can see. God, open up their ears and they can hear God. Lord, whatever they need today, God, touch them, Father. Yes. God, it's in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Folks, I... I actually was looking at something else for a message. This passage of scripture came to me this week. But I, I read something this week that just really just it shouldn't surprise me. But it did surprise me, but it did. I know that's kind of crazy, but I want you to listen to me. There's a preacher in another denomination, and I'm not going to mention the denomination. <coughs> it wasn't the Pentecostal and it wasn't the Baptist, it was another denomination. <coughs> I want you to listen to this. He said that the Bible is not for today's people. Mm. For 2024, the Bible is not for us. He says it's outdated. He says it's hard to relate to the Bible in modern day times. But let me tell you about this preacher. Why he needs God. It is a woman who identifies himself as a man. And he's going around and everybody's just following him like he's one of the greatest things that they are. <laughs> and that troubled my spirit and I got to study it and God took me to this passage of scripture. And if you go back to the first part of chapter 12 that I read, it's talking about when we was young. And I don't know about you when I was young and I was... I was <laughs> Full of eat vinegar and full of anything. I mean, I didn't. I wanted to do this and I wanted to do that, and I and I was thinking, my gracious, alive! I don't care about this and I don't care about that. And when we're young, you know, the last thing we want to think about is God, because we're more wanting to take care of us and satisfy us and. Look at me and look at that. And if you go and read this scripture and you break it down, this is basically what the writer and Solomon is talking about here when you're young. And you really don't care about anything. You don't care about going to church. You don't care about God. And I'm very honest with you. I wish that I would have listened to my family when I was my mother and my father when I was young about going to church and learning about Jesus. But that just didn't appeal to me at the time. Now it does, and I wish I would have listened to them. Because it would have helped me on the decisions that I made. I can see where I didn't want to do it back then. And I see times in my life where I wish that I would have started when I was younger. And I wish that I would have done this and I would have done that. I believe I might not be so 
sometimes in the condition that I'm in today. Because I wouldn't miss it. And if you go on and look at this passage of scripture, and he talks about the house in verse number three. But you've got to understand, when he says the house, you know what he's talking about? He's talking about your body. He's talking about us as an individual. He's talking about us. And can I tell you, he tells you in this passage of scripture, a lot of things that we do is for vanity. Yeah. A lot of things that we do means nothing. But we do it and we get pleasure out of doing it. And when actually it's not benefiting us one bit. We think, oh, I need to do this. And I need to do that. And I, I want my friends to think about me as this way. And I want my friends to think about me as that way. When all it is, it, it means nothing. It means not a thing. It's emptiness. It's vanity. Right. And he talks about that in verse 3. Then he goes on down and look at verse 4. <laughs> Hallelujah. And it says, And the door shall be shut in the street when the sounds of the grinding is low. And he shall rise up a voice out of the birds and all the daughters of music shall be brought low. Listen. <laughs> If we could only understood back then <laughs> that you can't do what you want to do. You've got to do what God wants you to do. And as I get older in life, I, I want to beat myself up, but God says don't. Because you have to learn. Because if you look at this passage of Scripture, the older you get, when you're young, there's no responsibility. When you're young, there's nothing that you're really concerned about. But as you start getting older, you start having burdens. In the 20s, when you're in your 20s, and you're thinking, man, I'm alive. I got a little bit of burden, but I, I think I can make it. I still don't make the right decisions in my life. But I think I can make it on my own. And all Solomon's doing when he wrote this passage of Scripture, chapter 12, how the first few verses he's talking about things in our life. Like when we're, when we're young, we don't care about God. But as we get older and things start happening in our lives, we think, I need to depend upon somebody. I need to look to somebody. I need help from somebody. And we look to the things of the world and the world can't help us. When all Solomon is trying to tell us, we need to look at God in all of our lives. That God will bring us through. That God will help us. That God will help us. Yes. Because if you go on and you read, go on down in verse 5, it says, And when they shall be afraid of that which is high and fear, shall be all in the way, and the almond tree shall flourish, and the grasshopper shall have burdens. He's talking about the Creator here. Reminds us of our days of youth when we really didn't care about anything. But when you start caring about something, what we, the biggest thing we need to, to care about is this. Will it be heaven or will it be hell? Will it be heaven we spend eternity or will it be hell? Well, preacher, we're living... This was written some, I wrote it down, 900 years before Christ was born. 977 years before Christ. He's warning the people. Preacher, this was written back then. This is a warning to the people today. This is a warning, not only to the church, but this is a warning to the people out there in a lost and dying world. Whether you're young or whether you're old, don't depend upon the things of the world, but find God. Hallelujah. When you're in the 20s, 30s, find God. Get a hold of God. Hold on to God. Don't let God go because you listen. In the end, when you're dead, that God, either you are going to go to heaven or you're going to go to hell. There is no in between. 
Yeah. 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 And I, oh, God has really been dealing with me in this passage of Scripture. I'm going to lie to you, church. I have to pray, God, what about me? Yeah. God, what is it? What about me that I need to change? What about me that I need to let go of so I can be what you want me to be? There you go, right. Because listen to me, we've all been through things in our life. Yeah. Because <laughs> look at verse 46. Even the silver cord be loose or the golden bowl be broken or the pitcher be broken at the fountain. I know it, it's given a description, but basically it's talking about the human body. And as you get older, things wear out. I'll be 64 next month. And I know there's something here older than me, okay? <laughs> But I'm learning about the scripture right here. Different things in my body ain't what it used to be. Amen. My bones are not as strong as they used to be. My knees. I have to get up in the morning and I have to try to pop my knee if I want to walk. I got to or I'll be walking down and I'll just stop because I have to pop it. I'm seeing things happen in my body that as I get older, I know that I'm thinking, God, I can't wait to get that glorified body. Amen. I know that things break down. <laughs> oh, my goodness. I don't care how much plastic surgery you have. <laughs> now listen to me. They can go in and try to fix it, but it's still there underneath it. My shoulders, my knee, my feet, my side, I don't know, yesterday I got up here. Mama said, what did you do this time? <laughs> and we like it, baby, but as I get older, I don't have to do anything. <coughs> it just happens. <coughs> and I walk with God, we don't have to do anything, but things still happen. Yeah. But God's still right there. Yeah. God is grace and mercy. It's still right there with us. Things might happen in your life that you don't understand. This may come up, or that may come up, but God is still God. God is still a gracious God. God is still a God that cannot fail. Amen. Then we get down to verse 8. And as I was studying this passage of scripture, I learned something about Solomon. Because verse 8 to verse 12 talks about he, he warns to, to listen to those that are wise. Because yeah. when we're young, we don't care about it. We don't want to listen because they don't know how. <laughs> we don't want to listen. And in this generation today, they don't want to listen. They say, oh, well, that was back in the 60s and that was back in the 70s and we're living in the 2000s now and you don't know anything. Listen, child, God don't change. It still affects today just like it did back then. But when you don't listen to him, he to wisdom. I ain't got my phone, I'm using it. Give me your phone, you got it? Give me your phone, man. 
You know what they do? They get on here. Amen. <laughs> and they go to Google. Yeah. Or they go to Safari. You don't know what you're talking about. Google says this. I said, I don't care what Google says. I know what the Word says. And I know what the Word of God says. And I know what I've been through. And I'd rather have a reason if somebody would step me into it than anything that Google has to say. Amen. Thank you. That'll probably get delayed, but I don't care. <laughs> Wisdom from somebody that's been through it is a whole lot better than anything Google could come up with. Here, here. I know to listen to somebody that's been through the fire or been through the, the troubles and been through everything in their life that knows how to get to it. Then listen to somebody on the phone say, well, if you try this, this will happen. Or if you try that, well, why don't you try God and see what he has to say about And these Proverbs... I didn't know this, and I've studied a lot of Proverbs. I love Proverbs, and I love Psalms. Mm -hmm. But Proverbs, Solomon wrote some 3,000 Proverbs. They're not all in the book of Proverbs. But God used a 1,000 of them to be included in the book of Proverbs alone. The, the Proverbs are inspired by God and are the wisdom of God. Not man, but God. Between Genesis to in the beginning, God created heavens and the earth. And to Revelation chapter 22, where it says, The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Amen. Uh, thousands of proverbs of wisdom and we would just listen. And we would listen to what God's trying to tell us. I cannot promise you, I don't care what you're facing in life, if you open this up, there's an answer there. Don't Google it, open it up. Look and see what it says to do. It might not be what you're used to, but I promise you, if you obey what this says and you do what this says, I promise you, it won't steer you in the wrong direction. It won't. Uh, it might be, you may be an outcast of the world, uh, but one day this world's going to die uh, and burn up. But my God, uh, we got to stand before Him one day. Uh, and we're going to have to give an account for every idle talk and every idle word uh, that comes out of us. Preaching hard this morning. No, I'm just preaching what the Lord told me to preach. So we got, because listen to me. You've got to understand the first 12 verses before you can get to the conclusion. The Bible says, I all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Yes, we have. There is no one in here today that is perfect. Yes. I want to I want to give you a definition of a word first. But I found it kind of interesting. It really blew my mind. And in verse eleven, it said, "The word of the wise." <laughs> Now, Lord, I looked this work up and I wanted to say it so bad. Goes. What? Goes. Goes. I said, I want to know what that is. So I got the Greek and the Hebrew and the Aramaic out. And I said, I want to know what this is. <clears throat> this is an instrument that's about eight feet long. That is used to guide the oxen when they're being plowed. What do you mean? When they won't go what they want to go, how they want to 
The farmer wants him to go, he pokes him. God uses that as an illustration. When we get out of line, he starts poking us. Yeah. Hey, get back over there. Get back over there. But if we don't heed to it, and get back over there, you poke them in the heart. And I don't know about you, but I've been poked so many times in my walk with God. But I don't want to be poked anymore. Because I want to listen. The vanity inside of me decides that I know better than God. And the vanity inside of me does not know what's better for me than God does. You don't. Because look at verse 13. Let us hear the conclusion. What are you talking about, preacher? Your final destination. When they roll you in somewhere, either at a church or a funeral home, and they throw the casket, the lid open, and you're laying there, I promise you, you, you're at your conclusion. When the preacher stands up or whoever it is stands up, they can only tell you about the person man and you don't know them really, to be honest with you, where they're at. Because you preach your funeral before you die. You preach the conclusion of your life before that life's breath comes out of your body. You let everybody know the conclusion of your story in the end. You know, it brought one of my favorite shows back to TV. An emergency. It's a show back in the 70s that I used to just love. It's about firefighters and paramedics. I don't know, I said, oh God. <laughs> <laughs> but you ever watch shows like that or any show today? And they get to, it goes from 5 to 6 at 557, continues next week. Continues tomorrow. That tells me that the conclusion. Of that story for that day is going to continue tomorrow. Right. Can I tell you in your life, there's been times in your life that God says today could be the day, but God says we're going to continue. God spared you another day. God spared you another opportunity. Today could have been the conclusion, but God's grace and mercy says, hold on just a second. Somebody's praying. Let's give him another shot. Let's give him another chance. Let's pray because, hey, they need another opportunity because somebody's still praying for them. Amen. That's what I tell everybody. Don't quit praying for your family. Don't quit praying. God can move on your behalf. God can move on everybody. It says, let us hear the conclusion of the whole matter. Fear not. I'm just going to be fear God. Keep his commandments. Because look, for this is the whole duty of man. What do you mean? If you... You cannot have a happy life without knowing God. Yeah. I know people now that thinks I've got a happy life because I have money. Money don't make you have a happy life. Yeah. If the truth be known, money gives you more headaches than what you really don't want to do with. Yeah. Now, now I'm saying that, don't give me a happy 
Now, I'm not saying you don't have to have, you have to have money to survive. But you can let your money be your God. You can let money determine you're going to do this and that instead of saying, God, what about you? What about you? Because it says in 1 John chapter 1, verse 7, but if we will walk in the light as he is the light, we have fellowship one another with another, and the blood of Jesus Christ, his son, cleanses us from all our sins. Amen. How are we walking today? Because the conclusion in our life is when that life breath comes out of your body and that life step takes over, what's the conclusion of that? Because listen, the Bible says, not Sam, but the Bible says it's appointed in the man who wants to die. Right. We're all got a, a time of death. The question is, when that happens, what's the conclusion of your life going to be? Because I promise you, you ain't even you might you might stand before God and say, "For well, God, I just needed a little more time." He said, "I'm sorry." Mm -hmm. Well, God, I tried you, but I didn't like it, so I thought I'd come back to you when I got older. Mm -hmm. God says, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Well, God, this one did this, and that one did that, and I got jealous, and I didn't think you loved me anymore. God says, I'm sorry. Mm -hmm. Listen, the Bible says to seek out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Mm -hmm. You're not going to be able to stand before God with any excuse and say, Well, God, I back him. If you did that, this God said, "I'm sorry." Because look at verse fourteen, and I'm going to come to a close. This was the one that got me. For God shall bring every work to judgment, and every secret thing, folks. There's nothing secret with God. We get home and I sat behind our old four walls of our house and we think I can do anything and nobody knows about it. God knows about it. Yes. God still knows what goes on behind your doors at your house. Yes, yes, yes. Every, and every secret thing, whether well, listen, whether it be good or whether it be evil. You're going to give an account for it. Yes. I don't know how many times we've heard this in this church in the last month or so. In Sunday school and Bible study and church. Don't lay your head down at night. And have something between you and somebody else or you and God that came yes. down the way. Yes. Don't close your eyes. Make sure you're clean between you and God. And I'm going to tell you this, and I'm going to come to a close. Unforgiveness in a person's heart will keep you from the place that God wants you to be between you yes. and Him. Unforgiveness will keep you God wants you to be. And I can show you in the scripture, God's not obligated to answer your prayer with unforgiveness in your heart. So you better be careful. Don't let nothing stand between you and God. The preacher, I, I want to go say something. I want to ask somebody to forgive me. I don't want that forgive me. It ain't a matter whether they forgive you or not. That's immaterial. It releases you. It releases you. When you get released, that burden is lifted off of you. Amen. You'll feel that peace inside of you that only God can give you. Let's stand. Folks, please.
so we'll get this word back in the day. There's something standing between you and God. There's something that you need to take care of between you and God. Please, find somewhere today, find an altar to come here and pray. Don't go home or don't go out these doors or don't think, well, i got plenty of time. You're not guaranteed tomorrow. Mm -hmm. You ain't guaranteed to walk out the doors of this church. But you are guaranteed to be a God, a just God. You are guaranteed that you're going to stand and give an account for everything that comes out of your mouth. Yes, you're going to stand before a righteous God that loves you. And he's either going to say, well done, or depart from me. There ain't no in-between. There ain't no purgatory like some people say they are. You know, I go even one step further than I'm going to pray. You can't depend upon that you die to somebody pray you out of hell into heaven. Yeah. There's a religion out there today that tells you we'll pray. <coughs> you live any way you want to, and when you die, we'll, we'll pray you out of hell into heaven. Right. That don't happen. Mm -hmm. yes, sir. Yes. That's a lie. From the pits of hell and smell like smoke. Yes. Let's pray for those watching. Heavenly Father, God, I thank you and I praise you for your blessing, God. Lord, I gave you the word. I gave you the word, God, like you asked me to do. God, I asked you, God, to ordain this word. God, ordain this message. Let it go out and touch the hearts of the people. God, help them to open up their hearts and their minds so they can receive God as it goes out. Oh, God, I pray, God, that you'd open up their eyes and they get back into church. God, that they would start seeking you with all their heart. God, that they would quit worrying about what the world thinks and they would do. That the world's this and the world that. But God, that they would focus on you, God. Father, it's in Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. All right.